Hello, Floss Tube friends. Welcome to the Starlight Stitching Co. Floss Tube number five. Today is December 15th, 2022. Um, it's almost Christmas. I cannot believe that not this weekend, but next weekend is Christmas. It's kind of crunch time for finishing up gifts uh, before they can get wrapped up and put underneath the tree for family and friends. Um, and it's just been the usual holiday craziness with stuff going on and things to be prepared. It can be a busy time of year. <laughs> also lots of fun, lots of time with family and friends, but can also be kind of crazy and kind of busy. Uh, so let's see. I have my notes in front of me, so excuse me for looking down. I just don't want to forget anything. Uh, let's start off with, I have two FFOs, and one of them was actually a new start and a finish and a fully finish, all since the last video. It's over here, let me grab it real quick. <clears throat> so this one you've seen before, this is Magic Fairy. Uh, this one I stitched on a screen printed Ada that I'd gotten from a shop on Etsy. I used a the glow in the dark DMC floss. We'll need to take a lint roller to that before we wrap it up. So I just got a 10 inch embroidery hoop from Walmart and spray painted it black. Then I added this rhinestone looking ribbon trim to the edge, just hot glued, and the silver ribbon. Just a piece of felt on the back to cover up the back, make it nice and pretty. So this gift is ready to be wrapped up in a box and put under the tree for a Christmas gift. I really like how it turned out. I think it's, it's nice. The next one, FFO I don't actually have. So what happened was I had signed up for a Secret Santa Smalls swap months ago and completely forgot. And for whatever reason, I didn't get the email assigning me to a person. So I didn't find out that I needed to make something or what exactly I needed to make until about a week and a half ago. So I had to immediately figure out, okay, what do I have in my stash that I can use to make a small and get it done in time to ship out. Um, unfortunately, my partner is gonna get it a little bit later than we were supposed to, but it is currently in the mail on the way to her right now, and I hope that she enjoys it and everything that I put in the box. Um, so I'm gonna pop up a picture here. I stitched Snowman Kisses by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I did change the colors. I used a piece of my uh, sparkly blue indigo dyed Ada that I have, and I switched out some of the colors. Um, I don't have the pattern handy. I kept it because I wanted to stitch it for myself, but I don't know where I put the pattern right now. Um, I did switch out some of the colors because the sample was stitched on a light colored fabric and I was using a darker colored fabric. So I think one of the darker colors I switched for a pale blue. Anyway, it ended up looking really nice. I finished it in a flat fold. It's the first time I've ever done a flat fold, so it's definitely not perfect, but I am really happy with how it turned out. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm dealing with a little bit of sinus stuff going on. So um, I finished it off with a bow on the top, some silver bells, and a snowflake charm stitched onto the bow and I think it looks really pretty. So I hope my partner enjoys that. Uh, next up is whips. So we have I'm looking for the cover sheet. It's the one you've seen before. Christmas in pink. I'm trying really hard to get this finished for a Christmas gift. As always, there's a needle on the front, so let me pull that to the back so it's out of the way. 
So I have gotten pretty far on it. So I finished filling in the lady's coat and I finished this whole stack of presents here. I'm waiting until the end to do all the back stitching on it. Cute little presents and berries and leaves. Yep. That leaf on its own just looked odd and I wanted to make sure I didn't forget something, but I didn't. That's how the pattern reads. So this section here, other than back stitching, is done. The middle sleigh is done except for filling in the sleigh and adding a backstitch bow to this present. And I have started working on the third sleigh. So we have the birdhouse done with the little hearts above it. And I'm starting to work on the presents. So that means I have left the presents here, this cute little deer, and then all of this up here to do. I think that'll go pretty fast. I mean, there's lots of color changes, but they're all small motifs. So I'm hoping that goes pretty quickly because I only have a week and a half left to get this done. <laughs> I do not want to have to gift it late. I did get... Pardon me, apparently I did not plan very well. I did order a white crane from the Rusty Ruth to put this in. So I checked my measurements with what I'm not going to be including on the pattern and figured out the size I needed. It happened to be really close to one of the standard sizes that the Rusty Roof offers. And I just think that, now of course there will be more up here, but that in the white frame is gonna look so good. And I'm hoping that the recipient really enjoys it. I like how their frames are just a little bit distressed. So I picked the white paint. I don't remember which frame this actually is called, but it's one of their standard ones in their shop, standard size. I'll make sure to link their shop below. They are my go-to when I need a frame for cross stitching because they are reasonably priced. Oh, it's a 10 by 20 distressed Cimarron in white. That is what the frame is. But they have really reasonably priced frames and they ship very quickly. They come packaged very well, comes with glass. This is just standard glass. I don't know, I don't think they offer museum glass. I don't know. I, I don't have the budget for that, so I don't really worry about that very much. So that is definitely my focus piece. I have had to set aside basically everything else. So I haven't done anything more on Christmas rules or the ornaments that I had wanted to stitch for my family. I've decided, I've decided that I need to start working on the ornaments for my family, maybe during Christmas in July. That way I have a hope of actually getting them done before Christmas. <laughs> so I will just have to finish our Christmas ornaments after Christmas. I know, boo, I didn't want to do that, but <clears throat> there are just only so many hours in the day and it's never enough. Okay, so one piece of haul that arrived shortly after my last floss tube was this beautiful bundle from Tiger Lily Designs and the patterns from Hello from Liz Matthews and silk flosses. I feel a sneeze coming on, so... Please excuse me. When it arrived, I immediately took the time to put my silk flosses on the 141 Design Company floss dial. Um, there were more slots, or more flosses than there were slots, so some of them are doubled up. And I just wrote in pen on the back, and I figure after I'm done, I can just lightly sand it and those will go away. But these silks are so soft and I did, not all of them have been cut, but I did fold them over shorter so they're actually 
18 inches in length. What What is the recommended length for stitching with silks? I know you're supposed to use a shorter length, but I just noticed when I used 18 inches, which is a lot shorter than I normally use, um, that it ended up being super frayed and worn out a long ways from the end. So I'm thinking I need to cut that in half again, but I haven't done that yet. Um, it also came with these cute little scissors and this beautiful beaded scissor fob from Tiger Lily's mom. It came with all is it seven of the first days of Christmas or 12 days of Christmas from Hello from Liz Matthews. So here's day one. Second day of Christmas. Third day of Christmas. Fourth day of Christmas. Fifth day of Christmas. Sixth day of Christmas. And seventh day of Christmas. These are all very beautiful patterns. Um, you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but just hear me out. So these trees, when finished, are huge. Um, even if I stitched it on 18 count or 36 count linen, the tree would still end up being about five and three eighths by seven and a quarter. That is large. I have a small house with not very many display spaces. What on earth am I going to do with 12 trees that are five and three eighths by seven and a quarter? That that's, that's pretty large. That, that's like one of these pieces of paper folded in half about, and then to actually finish it on a base to make it a tree. <clears throat> So I am going to be using 28 count opalescent white linen. And for the first time ever, I am stitching it one over one. So one silk strand over one linen thread. I've learned you do have to pay attention to which direction your stitch goes so it doesn't slip underneath the linen threads. Um, I also learned that even in my usual stitchy spot during the winter, I needed a light. So I went ahead, I should have grabbed it, I went ahead and went on Fat Quarter Shop and ordered a Halo Go light. So that is now on my stitchy spot during the winter, since in the winter we don't camp as much because it's cold. Um, so the night I got this, and after I got my silks all on my... Um, floss flower, floss holder, whatever it's called, I stitched this little leaf. I did make a mistake in counting already on one little leaf. I mean, I am stitching one over one for the first time. It's tiny. Can you see those t tiny little stitches? Can you see them? They're so small. <clears throat> but there's enough room in this particular pattern lost my cover sheet. There's enough room around it, it's this leaf right here, that my mistake isn't going to be a big deal. So I'll be able to live with it. It was only off by one little stitch. So I am going to finish these into ornaments, little 12 days of Christmas tree ornaments, to go on my craft room tree down here. Because right now I've only got a couple of handmade ornaments and the rest of them are just cheapy plastic ornaments from Walmart. And it's this pretty 28 count opalescent Ada. In case you haven't noticed, I like to stitch on things that are sparkly. <laughs> it seems to be a pattern. Um, I did also order enough fabric to do all of the samplers on 32 count. Oh, please. 36 count linen, which would be the equivalent of 18 count Ada. So I ordered a piece of fabric large enough to do all of the samplers 
on one piece. Here it is. Here's the whole thing. I am terrified of stitching all of them on one big piece because hanging on to this big piece of white opalescent Ada for years, it is going to get dirty. So I might be cutting the fabric into pieces and then eventually sewing it into a quilt wall hanging, kind of. I'm not really sure. I mean, I like the idea of it all being in one piece. I just don't know how to keep this white for a couple of years while I'm stitching on it. So we shall see. But first I'm doing the trees. Let me tuck all this away. <clears throat> and I'm just using a size 26 DMC needle. I don't really use any fancy needles. I use whatever I can find. I, I'm just not that picky on, on needles. Tuck everything back in here. Oh, it also came with the DMC Gold Metallic Floss. So they really packed everything that you need into this kit. I mean, of course, I'm probably going to be running out of floss colors eventually, but uh, so nice to work with silks for the first time. It definitely won't be a pattern because they're kind of pricey, but so this packet was a big splurge. It was a Merry Christmas to myself, and it's a very pretty project folder, and I love it. Okay, next whip. This is one that I had pitted up with the plans to start it as my Christmas Day start. So this is Oh Holy Night Nativity by the Stony Creek Collection. And it is very detailed and beautiful. Um, it's also large. Let's see, on 14 count Ada, it would be nine and a quarter by 25 and a quarter. I am stitching it on 18 count Ada, so that means it'll be seven and a quarter by 19 and a half. So again, there's the pattern. Very pretty. And after I got it kitted up, I couldn't resist going ahead and starting it. So here I have 18 count opalescent Ada that I writ dyed with a mix of aquamarine and evening blue. So it's a little bit darker than my Christmas in pink. Again, sparkly fabric, but I mean, it's a nativity, so it seemed like it should be special. And I just got a start on Mary's clothing right here. So this was one Saturdays. It was probably only about like an hour's worth of stitching. And that's all I've gotten done. And then I set it aside to focus on Christmas and pink. The one trick with this particular pattern is that there are 71 different colors of floss. 71. That's a lot. Now, this was before I had set up my DMC floss organization. You can see it right down there, the top of the stack. And I had just bought all of the flosses for everything when I ordered the pattern. <clears throat> I think I got it from everythingcrossstitch.com where you can just hit the button and it selects everything. So I ended up making these little chipboard cards and I wrote the DMC number and I also wrote the stitch symbol on each of the cards. And then for each one, I put three one yard about length, excuse me, Lulu. Whoop. 
excuse me, sorry. She likes to be right in the way. I put three one yard lengths of each floss color on these cards. And there are 10 of these cards with all of the beautiful colors that will be used in this pattern. Say hi, Lulu. Say hi. So this is all of the floss. And if I need more, I'll just grab more from the bag of the full skeins. But I figured that was a good start. Let me tuck this away. This is not in a fancy project bag. This is in one of those cheapy Amazon plastic bags because this has been kitted up for a couple of years, probably. Lulu. Okay, next I have my crochet whip. So that's all for the stitching whips. I am working on the Blue Sky Party for a Christmas gift. <laughs> she just wants to be right in the camera. And since I shared it last, again, please excuse the mess of loose threads and the yarn that is still attached to the bowl. So I finished the side panels where we're adding to the square and then I've got to start on one sleeve. The sleeve is probably not quite halfway done, almost halfway done. And then I just have the other sleeve to do and then weaving in 10 million ends. And then this will be ready to wrap up as a Christmas present. I think it's going to be super cute and I hope that my little niece loves it. Tuck all the threads away in my all you need is love and yarn bag. It's just a tote bag, nothing fancy. Then I also have the, uh-oh, <laughs> excuse me, found a pattern remnant that didn't get put in the bag. Lots of camera bumping today, I'm sorry about that. Next up I have the quilt that I'm working on for my daughter, which I also hope to have done for Christmas. I'm telling you, it's crunch time. I've got three projects that I need to finish, but the sweater I think is going to be really fast to get done. So this is the horse panel quilt for my daughter. I've got the top mostly done. I'm going to try to get back here so you can see it. So all I have left to do is add some borders. I have no idea what you can see. Add some borders, which will be this all the way around the edges. And then it'll be time to get it basted and machine quilted. So I'll be quilting it on my own home machine. I've got a baby lock jazz that has a nice large throat space. I'm thinking because of how small some of the piecing is and how many seams there are that I really need to do something like a free motion stipple or loop-de-loop -loop quilting, which I am not very good at. I still struggle with getting the speed right on my machine and end up with big loops on the back or the thread breaking or it, it's just always a headache. So I know I need to practice and get better at it working with my machine and this will be another opportunity but it'll probably take a full day to uh, quilt that and then I'll be binding it <coughs> in this stripe here. So I don't know. 
Is that too busy? The little stripe with the big buffalo check around. I just folded it up. Now I need to find an edge and unfold it again. I don't know. Is that too busy? Should I get just a plain red for the binding? I'm trying to use what I have in my stash. So, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a very busy quilt anyway. Yeah. I'll fold that up again after we're done. Okay. So that takes care of whip. Or whips. Um, I talked about the 12 Days of Christmas bundle. Then I have some haul. So I mentioned earlier that I participated in a smalls exchange. And my partner really delivered. And it is just so amazing what she included in this box. So here's how it came. In this adorable rustic season's greetings tin. This perfectly fits my style. Here is the sweet little ornament that she stitched. Uh, this is done on linen and it looks like it might be over dyed. The red is definitely over dyed because you can see some variegation here. I can't tell on the greens. The greens might be DMC but it's very pretty. And she finished it with this chenille trim and this fabric on the back. A sweet little peppermint on top. I love it. It's so cute. Then she also sent this Christmas in the Pines by Stony Creek. If you can't tell, I have a thing for Stony Creek patterns. They're just so pretty. So it says, have yourself a merry little Christmas with the different Christmas trees and a sweet little cardinal on the top. Adorable. She also kitted it up with the floss. So I believe this is the called for floss, but we've got the Weeks Dye Works Crimson, which is very deep. It's a very deep red. Oh, that'll be for the words, okay. Then we have Juniper, excuse me, Lulu, and Scuppermong. That seems like a funny name. Then also DMC and some Glisten Gloss Rainbow Blending Thread. That's for the snow in the pattern. And it came with the little cardinal button because the cardinal that goes on the top of the tree is a little button and it's so cute. I'm not gonna take it out of the box because I will lose it if I take it out of the box. <clears throat> she also included this sweet little Santa floss ring with lots of floss drops and a little snowflake charm and a jingle bell, super cute. A tiny little Santa mug with these Fannie Mae mints. I haven't tried them yet. I assume they're like a butter mint. I just kind of stuck them in here so I could show you. The Santa mug is very cute. <clears throat> Some Bowen size 26 tapestry needles. And then these beautiful scissors and this pretty Christmassy scissor fob. You can never have too many embroidery scissors. Lulu, get down. <laughs> I am so sorry. She just keeps getting in the way today. She wants to be involved. <coughs> I'm trying to show this charm and it doesn't want to stay turned the right way or focused. There we go. Really pretty. You can never have too many embroidery scissors. So that was a really sweet gift from my exchange partner. Um, I did not ask if I could share her name, so I won't do that. But thank you very much. I love it. I'm looking forward to stitching this. I considered even just starting it as a winter project, even though it does say Merry Christmas on the bottom, and doing it anyway, because it is so cute. I love it. 
Um, now for haul, or more haul, I should say. I ordered some floss. What's going on here? It's all tangled. Oh, I see. I untwisted it. Okay. So I ordered a lot of floss from Afterglow Workshop. on Etsy. And I intend to use this on some navy fabric with the Vivster's Let It Snow pattern. I think I shared that last time. Yeah, I kind of unwrapped them. They were so pretty and twisted together and then I screwed it up. Um, I'm trying to see if I have the printed pattern here handy, but I don't think I do. sure don't. Okay, so I'll just pop up a picture of it. I'm going to use this floss with some navy fabric for the Vivster's Let It Snow pattern. It's one of her recent patterns. And this pretty bluey purple, just a very wintry vibe on top of a navy fabric. <clears throat> so we can get the full effect. I just think that for the snowflakes will be so pretty. And this is just a 16 count Navy Ada from Fat Quarter Shop. That'll be perfect for that. I don't know if I'm going to start that this year because I also want to do the Quaker Snowflakes from Hello from Liz Matthews. Okay. I'm looking behind me because I have that one might have to wait until next year. We'll see. I do love me some snowflakes. Um, then I checked out the Jingle Ball. I did not have much time to participate. I tried to get into one of the stitching tables and it just was not cooperating. And then I just didn't have time to the next day. But I did get to go to the shops and spend way too much money on patterns that I have no time to stitch right now. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> so I picked up this, what is this called? Christmas Cuttings from Teresa Kogut's shop. And Deck the Halls from Teresa Kogut. And of course, I could not pass up the hands-on design tree lot. Tiny modernist Christmas ornaments, sewing themed Christmas ornaments. Hands-on design Noel, or I'm sorry, not Noel. Oh, Christmas three, it's got a Noel ornament. So some really cute, simple Christmas ornaments. And then I also, this has nothing to do with the Jingle Ball. Where's the other one I got from the Jingle Ball? I picked up the Jingle Ball Bobbles printed copy from the Jingle Ball shop as well. Then this wasn't from the Jingle Ball. This is just from um, Cherry Hill Stitchery on Etsy. Sleigh Bells Ring. Super sweet Christmas patterns. Um, I picked up some size 10 crochet thread from Walmart for the crochet Christmas angel tree topper that I want to do for next year. I wanted a pretty handmade uh, angel for my Christmas tree. A few more things here. I got in the Color and Cotton December Thread Club. I'm in the 10 skeins package, so pretty grays and blues, blue, purple, a golden color, very nice. So it's just adding to my collection of color and cotton. Um, from Heartland Quilt and Stitch, 
I picked up the Winter Petites pattern. I love that sweet little angel. These would make adorable ornaments to give. And then this Snowflakes pattern. Um, I saw this shared on the Cornhusker State Stitcher floss tube, which Terry and Jamie, they're the ones that own Heartland Quilting and Stitching on Etsy. And of course, I'm a sucker for snowflakes and snowmen and cardinals and all things winter, which is funny because I get cold really easily. I mean, I don't mind the winter. I just get cold. Lots of sweaters. <laughs> It works. I also picked up two, um, let's hold it the right way, Hol Holiday Color Story Charm Squares. And this will be to finish a quilt for my husband for next year because I have a panel for that. So it'll be similar to my daughter's quilt, just with a different center panel and different fabric. Then I saw this kit on Simple Stitches. I had added it to my wish list for maybe somebody to get me for Christmas, the red one. Then they had this blue one back in stock. I love blue. I love snowflakes. And they only had one left in stock. So I ordered myself another Christmas present. And then took it off my wish list. So I'm looking forward to making that. Again, I don't know when. So many things, so little time. Um, I covered my notebook. Let's see that I mentioned everything. Oh, and I've also seen on Instagram, if you don't follow Buffalo Flats Quilt Co. on Instagram and you're a quilter, you definitely should. Even if you're not a quilter, you should. She makes such beautiful things and beautiful patterns. But especially if you're a quilter, you should follow her. She has been sharing over the last several months a really pretty Christmas version of the Cozy Cabin quilt. So she hosted a quilt along and she used the Cheer and Merriment fabric line. So let me grab all these together. Look at these beautiful colors. Beautiful jewel tones in Christmas prints, snowflakes, poinsettias, birds, greenery, some plaids, just very pretty jewel tone colors in I guess like non-standard Christmas colors because there's lots of aqua and turquoise with the red and it's just so pretty. I've been resisting for months. Every time I saw her post this quilt, I would drool over it and say, oh, I want to make that. It's so pretty. But I resisted because I've got lots of quilt kits and lots of unfinished quilts. I can turn my camera around. Haha. <laughs> Do you see that quilt ladder there? Along with all the wrapping paper. Ignore the wrapping paper. There are one, two, three, four, five, six quilts on there that need to be finished. Most of them are basted. They just need quilted. I think there's one more hiding under there too. Yep, seven. Seven quilts that need finished. As well as multiple quilt kits that I haven't done yet or in process quilts. But I fell in love with this one. And on her last post, I couldn't resist it anymore. I went to Fat Quarter Shop and bought the bundle and went to Modernly Morgan and bought the pattern and looked in my stash and I have the perfect background fabric. So this is a, what is this? I looked at it yesterday, but I couldn't remember. A basic gray grunge for Moda, but it's a grunge. I don't know if you can see this, that has aqua and gray, and it's just slightly an off-white background, like not a pure, pure white, but just very slightly an off-white. But that's going to be perfect as a background with these colors. And I happen to have just a little bit more than enough. 
for the bed size quilt. So I am working on setting out a schedule to work on that is kind of like my own block of the month for next year. We'll see if I can stick to it because I do not have a good track record with block of the months and sew alongs. And hopefully I can have that done by Christmas next year so we can cuddle underneath it because it is going to be so beautiful if it's anything like Buffalo Flat Quilt Co's quilt, which I really hope it is. Um, so that takes care of, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera again. Uh, that takes care of all of my haul. Hello, future me popping in because I realized I forgot one really cool piece of haul to share. So I got in my We Are Knitters kit for the Easy Eyelet sweater, sweater Scarf, which is a knit project. I've never done knitting before, but look at this packaging. Okay, so it came in a box, but this is how it was packaged. Absolutely beautiful. And then it came with eight millimeter bamboo knitting needles, six millimeter bamboo knitting needles. These are nice long ones too. How long are these? These are a total of 14 and a half, but 13 inches probably of working space before it increases in diameter. Then we have the pattern. We have some darning needles for finishing in those ends. Some knitting related stickers. Kind of cool. Oh, snap. Um, and then we have the balls of the squishy, soft, creamy colored yarn. I wanted a neutral color because I figured maybe I could wear this over some of my um, like short sleeve dresses to be able to wear them longer in the fall. Uh, let's see. This is a superwash merino wool, merino wool, and alpaca wool. And they recommend a size five needle. That's the dye lot. I was trying to see if it had a size, what they consider on here, but they don't. But either way, it's so squishy and soft and pretty. So there's enough yarn in here for me to make the size that I need. And the needles came packaged inside these tubes. And I say warning, amazing needles inside. And the, I don't know anything about knitting needles, but these do look like really nice knitting needles. They feel nice. Way better than the little aluminum ones that I picked up from Walmart. So I know this is an intermediate pattern, so I definitely need to practice the uh, stitches required, but this is going to be a project for next year, is to try to learn how to knit and make this pretty sweater scarf. So I think it should be fun. Huh? Any tips that you have for a aspiring knitter, um, please do share. I will take all the help that I can get. Okay, now back to the rest of the uh, regular video. Um, so now we have giveaways. So in floss tube number three, I think, I had drawn three names to win this opalescent hand dyed by me indigo Ada. So 14 count Ada that's been hand dyed by me. It's a really pretty very sparkly blue. That's that's pretty close to the right color. It's getting a little washed out. There we go. That's better. That's what it looks like. <clears throat> well, I drew three winner winners and only one of them contacted me back. So today I drew two new winners. 
Also, those two new winners came from Floss Tube Number Three's comments. So the two new winners are Raylene Jeffers and Basket Nine One One Six. Okay, and I'm showing your comment up here. If you're a winner, please contact me using the email address in the description box below. Send me an email letting me know what you won and your mailing address so I can get these two pieces of beautiful Ada shipped off to you. Um, I'm not going to contact, I'm not going to reach out to you. I'm not going to ask you for money. You have to uh, email me and let me know what you want in your address and then I'll get it shipped off to you. I just want you to know, I know there's been lots of scammers out there that have been contacting floss tube winners or commenters saying that they've won something and asking for money. I am never going to do that. You will always need to watch the video and then email me. So last week I had the giveaway of this sweet little deer. They call it the North Pole quilt pattern. And the winner of this giveaway is Tara Cox. So please, Tara Cox, send me an email to the email address listed below, letting me know what you want and your mailing address, and I'll get this shipped out. So today's giveaway is going to be this Oh Dear kit. Um, it was a Stitch Quarterly, I don't know, year before last, probably, probably the same time that quilt pattern came out. I've never opened it, so we're just going to take a peek at what's inside. So you have this pattern. Um, you have a needle. It's a John James size 26 needle. We have Blizzard Opalescent Ada. Shiny, shimmery, love it. I love sparkly things. And all of the called for DMC floss. So you will get that kit. So, and I highly recommend instead of using DMC for Rudolph's nose, use some of the DMC at 12 so it's sparkly. Oh, I know, sparkly. I just love sparkly. Give me all the sparkly things. Sparkly fabric, sparkly nose, why not? So, if you would like to win this, please don't say free, please don't say giveaway, please be over 18, um, United States only, because again, shipping is kind of crazy. And in your comment on this video, use the word Rudolph. So I'll add it in text here below somewhere in the video. Use the, co the word Rudolph in your comment if you would like to win this cross stitch kit. Okay? Future me again. I clearly was not very organized this time for this floss tube. So a quick shop update. Uh, there is not going to be a December 15th release just to relieve a little bit of the holiday pressure and enjoy time with my family doing all of the holiday activities. Uh, but on December 15th, Clutch Club members should receive emails with the option to purchase the January 2023 Clutch Club box. The Clutch Club box comes with an exclusive cross-stitch clutch that nobody else can get. So it's a fabric combination that will not be released in any other way. It also includes stitchy extras and a cross-stitch pattern. And I just wanted to show really quickly all of the patterns that were included in the 2022 Clutch Club boxes. And all of these patterns are now available in PDF form in my shop. So, oh, yikes. First was winter in January. Then we have, oh, I lost my magnets. My magnets stayed with winter. <clears throat> then we have spring which shipped out in the April box. Let's 
Summer, which shipped out in the July box. And finally, Autumn, which shipped out in the October box. So if you're in the Clutch Club, you will be receiving those emails later today on the 15th with the option to purchase it. You are never automatically charged. You are just sent an email with a, but a special button to a hidden listing that you can purchase it from. I will tell you that it is not Christmas themed or winter themed. That's the hint that you're going to get. Um, so if you would like to order that and you're in the club, uh, keep an eye out. Any unclaimed boxes I will list in my shop for anyone to purchase on January 1st. And those boxes will ship out on January 10th. There's only 100 boxes available. That's the most that I can do. And um, there's usually lots of fun stitching goodies in it. So if you're interested in any of these patterns from last year, See if I can hold them all up together. These PDFs are available in the shop right now. Thank you. Um, plans, obviously finish Christmas in pink, finish the sweater, finish the quilt, somehow all before Christmas weekend after next. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try. Um, then between Christmas and New Year's, finalize my plans for my cozy cabin block of the month. Is there anyone interested in doing a quilt along? I know Buffalo Flats just finished a quilt along for this pattern. Is there anybody else that would be interested in doing a quilt along with me? Maybe that would help keep me motivated to stay on track. I don't know. We'll see. If there's any interest, let me know and maybe we can I'll share my plan and we can do a quilt along together to break this quilt up over next year to have it done by Christmas. I don't know, we'll see. And other than that, I don't know, maybe start Quaker Snowflakes, maybe do some more work on my nativity. That's definitely what I plan to do on Christmas Day if I get any stitching time. There's usually not much stitching time on Christmas Day. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, yeah, the next floss tube video will be after Christmas. So I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and get to spend lots of time with your family and get to squeeze in some stitching time. I wish you well on any Christmas projects that you're trying to finish up as gifts before the holiday gets here. Um, I will be back the week between Christmas and New Year's with a whip parade and maybe some more defined plans. We'll see. Um, I think that's it. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get back to you on anything at all. Um, and that's it. So have a fabulous day. I hope you get some stitching in and Merry Christmas. Bye.